execution and excellence all wrapped into one. Minersville's Luke Stevenowski came through, tying a school record with six touchdowns last week. Oh, he earned his ice bath. Now Minersville trying to find a way to dial up the running game all over again at home against Williams Valley. Minersville played on Sunday because of rain, so a short week. They're still determined to find a way to win this one. At the half, Williams Valley down 21 to 14 in the third quarter. Alex Achenbach is like, I want to do something about it. Takes it around the left side. Good for 13 yards and a touchdown. Vikings take the lead up 28-21. And then Myersville answers. You know who? Luke Stevanowski, of course, up the middle, showing power and grace. And he will not be denied. Going to take it all the way for a 45-yard touchdown, just like that tied at 28. We go to overtime. Myers with the ball. But look at the defense. Dante Carr is tackled. That Vikings defense making a great play in Williams Valley with a fourth down play. They go for the field goal. Sage Smeltz comes through with the game winner from 21 yards out. That's good. Williams Valley wins in overtime over Minersville, 31 to 28. What a game and a game winning kick for Sage. There was a lot of pressure, but I'm glad my team, I'm glad my coach had confidence in me. I'm glad my line, great with blocking. The snap was perfect. Everything was great. What do you remember about the kick? That it went through. <laughs> That's about it. And the celebration was on. Have you ever done anything like that on the football field before? No. <laughs> How does this make you feel to be, be part of this team and, and get the game winning kick? They're awesome. They're all great. They're also, they're just, they're like family. What do you remember that it went through? What a classic answer. Mid Valley and Old Forge. Let's see what these two teams can do to live up to that game. Less than two minutes to go in the game. Jordan Himaleski. It's like, I'll take it from here. Look at him go. Has the corner in the clear in the open and into the end zone from 67 yards out. 7 to nothing. Mid Valley enjoying the celebration. That's how you start things off. Later in the quarter, Jordan Holt wide open right here. Oh, the diving touchdown. Mama's putting that on the refrigerator. Mid Valley wins this one. 41 to 14. The game I've been promising you, you need to see Dunmore and Riverside early in the fourth quarter. Let's head to the fourth quarter of this one to see what happens. Chase Tadanio banged up last week, found a way to play with a game time decision, connects with Reese Gone. The trickeration gadget play leads to Richie Costa scoring to tie the game at 14. Dunmore punting from near the end zone. That leads to a safety. Onside kick recovered by the Bucks on the ensuing onside kick. And then Dunmore, Thomas Bowen connects with Danny Pickett Jr. for the touchdown. 20 to 16, Dunmore, so Riverside trying to see what they can do. Fourth down to Donia. Oh, he's stopped by Chris Conti with the clock winding down. And Dunmore hangs on to win this one, 20 to 16. Lackawanna Trail in the Super 16 countdown this week. These guys run the ball with Lucas Gumbel and Isaac Ryan, but don't think they just want a few yards. Last week, all but one touchdown was on a big play. Trail trying to stay undefeated at home against Honesdale. Head coach Steve Jervis says he loves the senior class's chemistry with his son leading the way at quarterback. Honesdale getting the ball and out to a good start. The quarterback sneak for Aiden Collins, bursting his way through for the touchdown to make it 7-0. Trail settling in up 14-7 in the second quarter. Up top, take it to him. The pump fake leads to a touchdown from Max Kimmel, who makes the great catch from 36 yards out, 21-14. And of course, we told you about the running game, Lucas Gumbel. Trail goes ahead 33-7. Still in the third quarter, more to the ground attack. Still doing it. Hunter Patterson powers his way from 10 yards out for the touchdown. Lackawanna trail domination, the definition of it, winning 39 to 7. The Lions are off to a 4 0 start. You know, it, it was awesome. You know, we were, like you said, we were down in the first quarter, and then uh, we all worked together and just, just pushed forward, and it, it felt great to get that revenge game for sure. So we were looking just to see um, if the safeties were coming down and run support, and uh, they, they bit on the, on the play action fake, so I had to give Max a shot, and he made me look good. He's a great athlete. Had a lot of really good backs, um, you know, and our offensive line just, you know, it has worn every team down so far, which is huge. It definitely makes us tough to stop. Uh, wing T alone, that's definitely hard for defenses to stop alone. But when we have depth with the backs like Isaac Ryan, Hunter Patterson, we have Meech, and even the quarterback, Steven, uh, running quarterback sneak, um, they really, they don't know how to stop it and they can't. Another great rivalry matchup in week four, Jim Thorpe and Palmerton. The mayors of each town bet on this game and the losing mayor has to wear the t-shirt of the winning team to the next city council meeting. So, so much on the line in this game. Might as well call it the Chris Wachowiak special because he works at both schools. The Palmerton coach 
got the silent treatment this week, but he wanted to speak on the football field to the staff at Jim Thorpe, telling them my football team's going to win in this one. But Jim Thorpe came out strong. Cole Lazarek on the keeper, gets down inside the five-yard line. And a few plays later, you got to give it to him again, right? Up the middle, weaving his way in, directing traffic for the touchdown. Jim Thorpe cuts into the lead to trim the lead to 13 to 10. And then Jim Thorpe, Lazarek, up top, take it to Justin Yesikavich. 31 to 21, Jim Thorpe. But Palmerton, this guy, man, he does everything. Six touchdowns in this game. Matt Maholic, 70 yards, get out of his way, going all the way in for the touchdown. Palmerton, their offense, pouring on points, doing what they do, coming back to win and winning this one. 41 to 31. The Wyoming area cheerleaders cheering on their team, taking on Greater Nanticoke. Nanticoke has the ball down 21 to nothing, but they're determined to find a way to come back. Seth Raymer connects with Jaden Julian to complete a 22-yard play for a first down. A couple plays later, Raymer, the QB keeper this time from four yards out, 21 to six. Wyoming area, they got on the board. And then Aaron Crosley finding the seam here and finding the end zone, a five-yard touchdown. Wyoming area ahead 28 to six, start of the fourth quarter. Touchdown from Michael Crane. Scoring here, Wyoming area wins 35 to 13. Hanover area and Pittston area. Pittston with the ball. Only took them one minute to score because they have Xavier Blackshear. That's a weapon, 11 yards out. Pittston area with the touchdown. Later in the first quarter, Drew DeLuca connects with CR Bablo for a 24-yard play. That's a first down and actually that's a touchdown as well. 14 to nothing, Pittston. One minute left in the first quarter. DeLuca again connects with Lucas Lopress, a 35 yard completion in the second quarter now. DeLuca with the quick pass to Matt Walter, and he goes in for the 45 yard touchdown. Pittston area looking good, winning 35 to 6.